faith, but God pronounces judgment or blessing dependent on their works. I know your works. So, this is so important. Holiness is not a means of earning salvation. You can't be holy enough to deserve salvation, but it is a result of earning salvation. And so, we are going to talk in, in our sessions um, over the next little bit uh, about external standards of holiness, or what I prefer, I really prefer the term, external convictions in our lifestyle. And I would like to take you to this scripture, which is more than once in the Word of God. It's in First Chronicles, it's in Psalms. Uh, Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. How many have heard that scripture? Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Well, worship is the word shakah in Hebrew. To bow down or to submit to someone. You bow and you are saying, I submit to you. You are my ruler. The Lord is obviously Jehovah or Yehovah. So he's, the, he's God, the holy God. Worship the Lord. Bow down or submit to God in the beauty. That is the Hebrew word hadara. Hadara means holy adornment or glory or the, the garments that they would wear when they came to worship God. No one came to the temple in the Old Testament with old, tattered, dirty, filthy garments. Uh, you cleaned yourself up to go to the temple of God because it was a holy place. And so the word hadara means uh, garments that adorn you to go into God's presence. And holiness, of course, is that word kodesh, which, which means separation or apartness or separateness or anything that is consecrated or taboo. It's, it was very, very sacred. And so many of the new translations of Scripture, they kind of pick this up. The Amplified Bible says, Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness and in holy array. The Emphasized Bible says, Bow down to Yahweh in the adornment of holiness. Or the New American Bible simply says, Worship the Lord in holy attire. If you trace that phrase that is more than once in the Scripture back to its original root words, literally it would read, Submit to Jehovah God, in the external adornment of separation. When you come before God, you, to, you are to be attired in a way that He prefers, not a way that you prefer, yeah. not a way that culture prefers, but in a way that He prefers. Now, we could stop right here, and I, I probably should, and say this, that obviously, and I want to be very clear here, I am not here to, t- to tell you or to teach you that external standards of holiness that they are all of holiness in fact they are the smallest part of holiness the only reason they become an issue is because our culture is so unholy and ungodly that we stand out when we do those but the big issues of holiness are internal issues because you can dress ever so modestly but if you have an immodest spirit inside of you it cancels it out You can dress ever so holy, but if you have an unholy spirit inside of you, it cancels it out. So internal holiness is by far the bigger issue here. But if you have internal holiness, it cannot stay inside. It will push itself out. It will force itself out. If you've really got that Holy Spirit in you, it will make you want to delight yourself in the Lord and He will give you the desires of your heart. It will make you want to live and appear and dress holy. And many modern Christians, they they are very proud. They say, I am holy on the inside. (laughs) And they're totally unchanged on the outside. That is not correct. That is a grievous error before God. We need holiness both inside and outside. So uh, just before we jump in, here's how we're going to divide up our time over the next several hours that we are together. We're going to talk uh, just a little bit more about holiness principles or questions concerning how those principles uh, are practically evidenced in our lives because the principles are the most important. And then we're going to talk about uh, something that uh, is an error in North America. Um, And uh, perhaps here, I'm not as familiar with your your culture, but uh, in North America, I hear much holiness teaching and preaching, and it is all about the ladies. Now, there is a reason for that, which we'll talk about, but we're going to start with the men, and we're going to talk about them first, and then we will talk about the ladies. Um, And so that's kind of how we'll divide up our time. We're going to be very practical and uh, we'll talk about all of these, these issues, and I, I pray that the Lord will help us get that. So let's go a little further in this principle part before we take our, our break. Uh, 
So unless you have internal holiness before God, it doesn't matter if you have external holiness. But if you have internal holiness, it matters very much that you have external holiness. And I've written this statement in your notes. Salvation is a free gift. But sanctification, that will cost you your whole life. Yep. If you're going to be sanctified, if you're going to be holy, and you're going to live for God, it will cost you everything. And here's what Jesus said in Luke 9. No man having put his hand to the plow and looking back, he's not worthy. He's not fit for the kingdom of God. It will cost you your whole life. Matthew 16, Jesus said to his disciples, notice he said unto his disciples, not the crowd, to his disciples, if any man will come after me, here's what you do. You get real free. No, 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 no. You deny yourself and you take up your cross and you follow me. And whoever wants to save his life, whoever wants to be very accepted in their culture and just save his reputation, his life, he'll lose it. And whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. And what is a man profited anyway if he gains the whole world and loses his own soul? Or what would you give in exchange for your soul? The Son of Man shall come in the glory of his Father with his angels. Notice this. And then he shall reward every man according to his faith. It's not what it says. He will reward every man according to his works. Because works are how our faith evidences itself in our lives. I am not here to preach works-based religion. That doesn't work. That's what many of us came from. I am not here teaching works-based religion. I am here teaching a religion that is built on our faith in Jesus Christ, but that faith is so real, and that faith is so powerful, and that faith is so life-changing that it grows out through us into works of righteousness and godliness and holiness. That's the difference. So, practical holiness now. That's the theory of holiness. That's the theology of holiness. Theology is pretty easy. We can all say, amen, that's good. But when we get to practical living, that's where it affects us and our choices and our lifestyle. And so let's talk about practical holiness. Now, holiness teaching comes from actually three places. If you're, you're going to talk about lifestyle convictions or holiness standards, we have three uh, holiness teachers that impact us, and, and they are as follows. First of all, you have the Bible. That is our supreme holiness teacher. The Bible teaches us. And so it's very important that when you uh, find a holiness principle in the Bible that you obey that holiness principle. And so if you're talking about holiness standards, uh, you're talking about uh, Bible standards. This is either a, a, a specific Bible standard, don't do this, or it is a valid principle, an application of a Bible principle. But, but those are Bible standards. And then God has given us uh, spiritual leadership as our second holiness teacher. So these are our holiness teachers. The Bible is number one. Spiritual leadership is our second holiness teacher. And you need both. And then, so spiritual leadership, uh, what spiritual leadership does is they are commissioned by God, the fivefold ministry and, and the leadership in the church, they are commissioned by God to help us take the Bible, because the Bible has very many specific commands and we obey those. Spiritual leadership, their task is to take the Bible's principles and apply them to contemporary modern situations. Uh, the last time I checked, there's nothing in the Bible about the internet. Have you seen it? There was one Canadian preacher, I'm embarrassed to say this, that he was Canadian. He, he didn't like the internet, I, whatever. And, and so he wrote a tract, and his theme scripture for the, the tract was when Jesus called his disciples away from fishing, and they left their nets and followed him. <laughs> I'm embarrassed to tell you he's Canadian, but he was. Uh, I would disagree respectfully with his conclusions. But there's nothing in the Bible about the internet, except that one scripture. Uh, <laughs> no. Uh, there's nothing in the Bible about the internet. But do you know that how you would interact with the internet would be a very critical holiness issue in 2009? And so spiritual leadership takes the principles of the Bible and they say to us, this is how we apply this principle. So with the Bible as our holiness teacher, we get the commandments of God. With spiritual leadership as our holiness teacher, we get those principles of God through our spiritual leadership. And that's why spiritual leadership is so important. And finally, our third holiness teacher is the Holy Spirit itself in our lives. And through the holiness uh, teacher called the Holy Spirit, basically the Bible gives us the commandments of God. 